This is about the five types of signs in the Bible. And we'll uh, go through some references so that it's not not just me making up ideas here. Then we're going to look at what the scripture says. And when you read about gifts and signs, you often concentrate on gifts in the church, it, in the body of Christ. And sometimes people even say to us that you're in sin if you don't speak in tongues. But there's much more than that to it. Uh, there were at least five different categories of signs in the Bible. Five different types, at least. When people don't realize and account for that fact, they often make assumptions and, and statements that might be true for another type of sign, but might not be true for that sign to which they're trying to apply it. So we need to learn which signs have which characteristics and which ones are for us, etc. Which ones were for Israel? We know there's an Israel, or there was in the scriptures. God worked with them, so which sign was for them? God gave signs to make Israel able to believe him. One place God gave that reason to believe in him was in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3, 4, and 5. Exodus 19, starting in verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to, now here's who this is going to apply to, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Israel, and tell the children of Israel, excuse me, the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. You have seen how, uh, this is verse 4, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, in other words, because of all that, I, uh, if you will obey my voice, so there's a condition, they needed to obey God's voice, another condition, and keep my covenant, then uh, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. It's like God was saying, you saw what I did for you. Now, because of that, believe me enough to obey me. So we're going to get into the first sign now. Uh, welcome to the room, those that came in after we started. And uh, let me just take a, a brief uh, minute here. Uh, Lori... I did make a verse list for this. It's on the website, followchristpattern.com. It's on page 14. That's uh, special posts. And it's down at the bottom. The bottom three in the middle. Uh, there's a middle column and a left column that only has had one. Now it's got two in it. You might have to put that driver in the root directory or wherever your uh, uh, wherever your study post do you use study post if you if you use study post it'll work if you if you just use uh, many Bible post you do good okay so it'll be the bottom one of let's see it's the one about five types of signs and you download it and then you go into study post and where it says load study you find it find where you downloaded it to and click on it and it comes right up in your study post so we've gotten to the first of the five signs now and we can see the first type of signs from god shown by god through the hands of Moses even before the Acts 19 signs was uh, well how can I put it 
look at the, the verses. We'll look at the verses. Uh, this is earlier than we saw before. We were looking in Exodus 19, uh, and now we're going to look in Exodus chapter 4. Uh, Exodus 4, uh, and we'll look at at least the first six verses. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. Verse 3, And he said, That would be God said to Moses, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. A serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Verse 4, and the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Verse 5, That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. Verse 6, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, um, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thine bosom, into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And so, you know, the Lord gave him a sign and about the serpent, and you'd think that would be enough, you know, but if it was me or you, probably under those circumstances, you'd be thankful for a second sign, a second, a, a second confirmation that God had spoken to him. So uh, it goes on in verse 8, And it came to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Hold on a minute. Uh, one more verse. Let me get this last verse of the series and then we'll address that question. And it came to pass, if they will not be believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry ground. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the ground, the dry, upon the dry ground. Let's see, uh, another break here, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand about how to get the verse list. It's been too long, and by the time I figure it out, we will be done. Well, I've got, you saw I've got two other verse lists too. We might as well go ahead and try and get it to work and and then it'll be ready for the next ones uh, tomorrow and next Thursday, hopefully. I'll just follow along and post as you go, Mike. It interrupts too much. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, God's Word is there for those that are hungry. Um, so, did you find them at the web page? Did you find the uh, five signs, five types of signs? Uh, at the website, did you find that on page 14? In other words, you go to followchristpattern.com and when you get there, there's a, a yellow menu at the top and with, with numbered items. Number 14 is special posts or specific posts. I think it's special posts. Number 14. Click on that, and it'll bring up the page that the uh, verse list is on, but it's not in the form of a verse list. It's a, a file. So you download that one file. Am I going too fast? We download the one file that says... Uh, I think it's MM dash five types of signs. 14 is Brian. 
14 is Brian. I'm not sure where you, I don't think you're on, uh, are you going by that yellow menu at the top? That uh, wide menu that's short, short and wide. Starts with information, number one information. And then the second column has number 14 in it. And you click on that. And then you go down, go down to where the first entry is in the left hand column. And go just past that should be, on, on, in the center column should be that uh, five types of signs. You right click on that and, and choose to save it or download it, whatever it asks on your computer. Let me go back and see where that is. See if I can find a Brian. Uh, I gotta find my browser first. I've got so many windows open here. Fourteen. Fourteen is specific purpose posts. That's if you're on. Uh, well, you go. Let's see, just keep giving me an instruction. You're right. Okay, I'm saving right now. I am saving. It. Okay. What do you save to? Oh, you could save it to your desktop. Wherever you save uh, archives to, our, uh, your you know like the when you're going to install a program, it downloads to a downloads folder usually or else desktop. It doesn't matter really. You just want to have it on your computer where you can access it, where you can find it easily and click on it. But you're not going to click on it. When you get it to where you can navigate to it and find it, you, you take the uh, study post and open it and go to load study. You see load study, that's kind of at the top uh, on the study side, not the, not the scripture side. And then when you see that, you, you click on that, it'll open up a window and you go to the place where you saved that study post file, that uh, mm-5 types of signs. Click on that sign, it should come right up in your study post. Uh, and we've gotten down through Exodus 4, 9, I think it was. And you can see there, they come up one at a time. You just click and then post, click in the text box of Paltalk and it should come up when you, when you click in there. Tell me if you have a catch, catch if you, <laughs> If something doesn't work right, and we'll troubleshoot it. And then, uh, when you get there, I save to my desktop. Good. Now open study post, so you can see the verse lists. It's, I mean the. Uh, books of the Bible, etc. It should be wide, two, two frames, two little windows, one to the left and one to the right, the scripture to the left, and instructions for the study post to the right, I think it is, uh, something like that. I don't have it in front of me right now, but you go up to the top there where it says load study. I tried, but it doesn't show for me to choose it. You tried what? You tried to save it or, or what? Or you're in study post. Are you in study post now? When you have more time, there is a, a, a brief instruction on the website uh, under under software, recommended software. Okay, so we'll just, like you suggested, we'll go ahead and do it by ear. Wing it, they say, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so we'll get back to the study. Let me just find where I had this. Uh, just a minute. All right. So we did verse 9, Exodus 9. You see what that means? That after the Lord reassured Moses with a second sign, the sign of the leprosy on his hand and then it going away, he even gave him a third sign with the, the, um, uh, the water, the, on the, the pouring the water on the ground and it becoming blood. Moses asked God for a sign, but God gave him three signs with which to start. And, and we know that he gave him more later because there were ten plagues that came at the word of Moses. And then, as if that was not enough mercy to show, see what God did later in the same Exodus 4 chapter, looking down at verse 30 and 31, Exodus 4:30. <coughs> And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people, and the people believed. And when, it, when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. So those signs did work. They did get Israel to believe God. It was a display of God's grace in that that he initiated the goodness and the benefit. And we see more of God's love and grace in, uh, in some of John, the apostle, Israel's apostle John, wrote in 1 John 4.19, We love him because he first loved us and that's the way it is with us too people that think god is is a evil god bringing evil into the world well there is a god of this world that brings evil but it's not the god of creation it's not the god that died on the cross for us for our sins uh, before the time when god put all his promises in writing he proved with signs what he said in order to give people reason to believe him and that's the reason for the first type of signs that they may believe Exodus 4 verse 5 that they may believe was the first type of signs uh, so that Israel may believe secondly let's go to the second of the five signs five types of signs I should say It'll be a little later in Scripture, after the end of the famine of words of the Lord. God, there were 400 years that were silence. God, uh, the sky was brass, they say. <laughs> there was no signs from God. There was, you know, in fact, they cried out in, what is it, uh, Psalm 78, I think it is, where we see not our signs. They knew that the signs were from God. Um, so, there was this famine of words, 400 years when God didn't speak to them, and that preceded, immediately preceded, uh, that silence ended, in fact, when John the Baptist came on the scene in Egypt, in, excuse me, and in Israel, and preached that, not only was he sent to make his, the path straight for the Messiah, but that the Messiah is coming. The, the king, he's bringing the kingdom. The kingdom is at hand. That kingdom they longed for back in Exodus 19. So um, after that famine of words, God showed the second type of signs through the hands of Israel's believing remnant. There were signs to Israel at large as confirming signs to confirm what God had told them and taught them and that that God is over there now with the little flock of Israel, Israel's prophetic remnant and that that is where God's signs have gone. So let's look at those confirming signs. They start in Mark 
chapter 16, verses 17 through 20. Mark 16, verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new t tongues. Verse 18, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. So this is after his three and a half year earthly ministry. He was received back into heaven. This is talking about the ascension of Christ back to heaven. And he sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs, following. Amen. So there you have it. Those uh, The Lord worked beyond the time he worked in his earthly ministry beyond when he was actually physically on earth for a while and, and we get explanation of that time gap there that time span in other places it turns out to be the acceptable year of the lord and and which ended in acts 7 about the last uh oh, ten verses or so of, of that uh, long speech and history of Israel's rebellion against God. Also, uh, as far as confirmation, look at uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts 2, 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God by, among you, by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. So, uh, it, those signs, they're referred to in the book of Luke as, uh, I'm just trying to see here if it's, it says, you men of Israel, so it's spoken to Israel, signs that the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth had been of God. It wasn't uh, some trick. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Now, now the writer of Hebrews is not talking to us. He's talking to the Hebrews. This is not our salvation he's talking about. It's, it's the salvation that God dispensed at that time. And I think we'll, we'll get to it in a few minutes when that time ended. Uh, well, I mentioned it a minute ago, the end of that acceptable year of the Lord and at the end of chapter 7 of Acts is when it ended. But uh, let's go ahead with uh, Hebrews. Two uh, verses three and four. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, we being Israel, not us, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us, there it is again, confirmed, it was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will in other words you don't get to choose you don't get a choice of those those uh, you know raising the dead signs of uh, casting out demons etc and the Lord does it to them at, at that period during, during that uh, second type of signs so the, in the recording of God's operations, God did not leave the validating of the message, the, the newly inspired scriptures, didn't leave it to man's impressions, uh, man's truthfulness, and to man's imaginations of God telling him things. The reason for this is the second type of signs. 
And, and what was the reason for those signs? John 4, 48. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So it's not the signs' fault. The sign made signs that Moses did for the children of Israel in the desert, in the wilderness, worked. They did believe, but here, through these centuries, they have been believing less and less, and they've been rebelling. God confirmed the events and the teachings with signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts, so that the scriptures would be preserved pure. And that's the second type of signs, confirming signs. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, let's go to the third type of signs. As we go a little further in God's record of the changes in his workings with man in, in Paul's epistles, uh, after the body of Christ began in Acts 9, we see God, we see that God showed a third type of signs. And here we see that Christ gave signs to the body of Christ for Israel. Instead of giving them to Israel, gave them to the body of Christ for Israel's benefit. And the reason for this third type of signs was in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And that's part of the definition of Greeks, isn't it? That that they were the Gentiles that sought after wisdom, uh, especially the wisdom of the scriptures kept in the synagogues at that time. And they came to the synagogues, blessed Israel, received the blessing from God. But that was just the seekers. The, the Greeks seek after wisdom, it said. But what we wanted for our... <laughs> Uh, the reason for the third type of sign is in the first half of the verse, 1 Corinthians 1, for the Jews require a sign. God created them. He knew how they were wired. He knew they needed to see signs. He made them that way so that they would require signs. During Israel's diminishing, whenever you see the body of Christ in close proximity to the Jewish synagogue, you begin to see that this this uh, third type of signs in the body of Christ for the benefit of those nearby disbelieving foreign speaking Jews. You couldn't just talk to them. You had to talk in their language. Well, they didn't know the, the, their language. Um, when they would speak, God made it to be tongues in their language so they could understand it. Uh, like in Acts 2, 11, and down through that section there. Let's look at those body of Christ signs given during Israel's diminishing. And we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <coughs> chapter 14. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 21. <coughs> In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Not <laughs> dazzle them, not uh, confuse them with noises, but speak. He's speaking. And God said he would do it. And yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Verse 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign. And uh, there's two descriptions here. What is and is not for uh, those who believe, and what is and is not, both, <laughs> both ways, e either way, for them that believe, them that believe in them that believe not. So that's why it, it sounds like it's repeating itself. I'm going to read it. Here we go. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. So tongues are 
for getting the gospel that can save them to people that don't yet believe. Tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, they're not for believers in the church or whatever, but to them that believe not, those that needed to hear the gospel to be saved. And then he goes on, but prophesying, after the, the word of God had been given and, and uh, there was no more need for body of Christ prophets to give their acknowledgement that what Paul wrote was the actual words of the Lord and scripture. Um, but after that was over with, the, the prophets were pro professors. They were professing what God had said and what had been written down, what Paul had revealed to him by Christ. So the second half of the verse is, uh, let's see, tongues are for a sign, prophesying, it should, I, okay, starting in the middle there, prophet, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Let me try and read that a little sm more smoothly. But prophesying serveth not for them which believe not, but for them which believe. So in other words, it would be in the meeting, in Paul's meetings, the body of Christ meetings, that, that prophesying or professing God's word would be useful. Uh, it's not for them that believe not. In other words, uh, that would be people that what they need is to hear the gospel in their tongue. So speaking in tongues was actually, we would call it today probably, Jewish evangelism. You could ascertain whether or not they were speaking spirit-given tongues because of what the Holy Spirit speaks. What, the Holy Spirit speaks the wonderful works of God in whatever language they're speaking. And look at uh, Acts 2, verse 11. Acts chapter 2, verse 11. And it says, Crete, and this is the end of a list of uh, people from what countries. It lists the countries that the Jews had gathered for the Pentecost feast that they were required to be at. Uh, what, three times a year they had to come to Jerusalem. So it starts off with Cretes, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So if it's genuinely in the person's tongue that's hearing it and receiving it, then what they hear being spoken about would be the wonderful works of God. God's salvation, God's grace, God's love. This third type of signs were vindication that God had been merciful to Israel, much more merciful than they deserved. Much more merciful than you or I would have been with Israel. And that is, that's the, uh, the third type of signs, the body of Christ signs to diminishing, disbelieving Israel in a dispensation of the gospel of Christ. Well, that's the first three. This uh, fourth sign is rather short, so we'll get right to it. It's, uh, we're going to look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. And there was the fourth type of signs that God showed. The fourth type of signs were the signs of an apostle. And let's look at the verse uh, that shows where that, the, that there were signs of an apostle. So we know that it's, it's a fact. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. The signs of an apostle don't particularly have to do with the body of Christ. They don't particularly have to do with Israel. The signs of an apostle were to prove that God was speaking through that apostle whom he had sent. Sent out, actually. Apostle means sent out, not just sent like missionary does. And that's the fourth type of signs, the signs of an apostle proving 
the the person speaking is the uh, the, the sent out one, the, the apostle. And lastly, fifthly, the fifth type of signs is seen in Exodus through Revelation. It's one of the most thoroughly documented sign types of signs in the Bible. The fifth sign of uh, or type of signs is the signs and lying wonders and miracles after the working of Satan with all power. Satan does work signs. He's he has in, uh, in uh, manifested the working of his signs in the past in past dispensations. Uh, not so much now, but uh, he will be in the future after the body of Christ has been taken up to heaven. So I don't, I don't see anything in Scripture that restricts the power of the God of this world to the time of the book of Revelation. I think those signs and lying wonders that are the working of Satan are at work today, especially with people promoting and being enamored by those Westcott and Hort translations of the corrupted Word of God that had been taken after it was revealed to Paul and written down and somebody took it and, and corrupted it, changed the words, left words out, left verses out that were important ones, and took it down to Alexandria, Egypt, where they'd been found in 1881, I think it was, or published then. Stay away from them. There, there are lies of the devil. Let's let's uh, stick with the, the received text, uh, mainly found in the Textus Receptus and in the English language. It's been translated into the King James Bible. Uh, that's that's where we find it. Uh, so. 2 Corinthians 2.17 For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. It's not talking about deceiving people with with the word of God or changing it to deceive, changing the way, it, the meaning of the words, things like that that people, some people do. He's talking about, when he says corrupt, he's talking about that actually changing the words in the, in the text of the Bible. And he says we... Paul and his helpers are not as many. There were many which corrupt the word of God at the time of Paul, before Paul laid down his pen. But as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. So, well, I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, remind me to go back to that if I forget. I, I, I've got, I don't think it's in my notes, but I want to com comment on that. Um, but let's take a look at some of the many references to those lying, deceiving signs and wonders throughout Scripture and in operation today. Exodus 7, starting at verse 11, we'll, we'll skip a few verses. Let's see, 11 and then 22. Um, then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. So they were able to copy some of the signs by the power of Satan. Verse 22, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So Satan achieved his will, didn't he? He, he hardened Pharaoh's heart and made it more difficult. So Exodus chapter 8 verse 7, And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Look in uh, Thessalonians, Second uh, Thessalonians, chapter two, verse nine, and it's giving a list of things, and it says, "Even him," talking about uh, 
person there uh, at that time in the future, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And then if we go to Revelation chapter 13, starting in verse 11 going through 15, Re Revelations 13, 11 to 15. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake, like, spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth the power of the first beast, all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14, And he deceiveth them that w dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had had the wound by a sword and did live verse 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And, oh, uh, yeah, I see in my notes here, what I asked you to remind me of, I see it's later here in the notes, and we'll get to it in a minute. But first, let's look at Isaiah 8, 14. Isaiah 8, chapter 14, chapter 8, verse 14, through verse 19. And then we'll get into Ephesians. Uh, Isaiah 8:14, And he shall be for a sanctuary, both for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Verse 15, And many among them shall stumble and fall, See, the stumble was different from the fall. They were separate. They're listed separately. The fall was in Acts 7, as we said, when Israel committed their unforgivable sin, blaspheming the Holy Ghost and speaking against the Holy Ghost. I think it's verse 56 or 57. They cried out with a loud voice against the, the Holy Spirit's words coming out of the mouth of Stephen. So Acts, uh, I mean Isaiah 8, 15, as many among them and many among them shall stumble they stumbled by crucifying the Son of God and fall they fell when they uh, fell from being God's peculiar treasure and and the way the, the uh, channel of blessing for the Gentiles they were brought down to even is even the right word level status with us needing a savior all mankind now and they stumbled they fell and be broken and be snared and be taken see that taken in in acts 20 28 20, 20 uh, acts 28 28 pardon me so going to verse 16 bind up the testimony seal up the law seal the law among my disciples and i will wait upon the lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Verse 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel for the Lord, from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and have and unto wizards that peep and that mutter should not people seek unto their God for the living 
to the dead. So that's a bit of prophecy. Uh, that's some of it has taken place and some of it has yet to be taking place. Let's look in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and we'll read from verse 10 to verse 18 <clears throat> and then comment. Finally, brethren, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Remember we said that uh, the devil has influence in this world today? The what's restricting him? Uh, what withholdeth? When what withholdeth is removed, he will have free reign and things will get mighty bad. Uh, it'll be trouble for Jacob. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil does have wiles. And Paul recommends, uh, says we need to put on the whole armor to stand against those wiles. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore? Take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Hold on just a minute, Kevin. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Some things can't be denied. <laughs> And I need another. <coughs> Pardon me. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Where do we find the truth? The only thing we have from God is is the Bible, isn't it? The King James Bible, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Excuse me. <laughs> and your feet shod there's a lot of armor here isn't there your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God that's the good news of peace uh, gospel of peace, having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, get ready. That's what we're doing. Keep doing it on your own. Day by day, look into your King James Bible, especially in what Paul writes to us, to us believers today in the dispensation that God is... Uh, well, God's dispensing His grace today. And the the verse for that is four verses actually, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, and we'll get to those at the end. But uh, write them down if you're not aware of them. That's your own proof. You can trust in that. And it's based on the trustworthiness of God. He says he'll save you in verses 1 and 2 if you believe what he did for you in verses 3 and 4. So take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all uh, verse 16 Ephesians 6:16. 6, above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation which is excuse me take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer 
and supplication in the Spirit. So prayer and the Word of God go together according to that. Take the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So let's draw our thoughts together on this now. Um, we've researched at least five types of signs in the Bible. And when people study the signs without accounting for the various types of signs, there's danger of lumping together all the signs as if they were the same. If you take the characteristics of any one type of sign and try to apply it to any other type of sign, you, you're making assumptions and errors by ignoring their differences. We need to be careful not to ignore the differences in our gospel compared to Israel's gospel, too. So don't ignore differences when you find them in the scripture. Don't make up bridges to make them sound like the same thing. It doesn't work. That doesn't work. The four or more different types of legitimate signs have different characteristics for different purposes. It's amazing how many people think that they have studied tongues when all they've done is to grab one or two occurrences that they find in part of the history of changes recorded in the Bible in, in Acts and then they extrapolate that to be for all people to practice at all times regardless of the conditions for which those tongues were confined. I guess it might be considered that I am going beyond the scriptural admonition, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But maybe this will be the time when one of them will stop ignoring God's word and start honestly and thoroughly, rightly dividing it, studying it to be approved of God, not ashamed. Always take notice of who's being addressed in these verses, in each of the verses of the Bible, and always identify to whom each proton, proton, pronoun is referring. I know there's a lot of talk about pronouns now, but uh, this is talking about you and uh, ye, we, when, when when Moses talks about you, he's talking about Israel. When Paul talks about you, he's talk, usually talking about saved people that have heard and believed the gospel that we just mentioned there in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and been saved by that. You're not every you in the Bible. Every time you see the word you, it's not always talking about you talking about other youth, <laughs> uh, Israel primarily, because that was the audience. You weren't in the audience, you weren't invited at those times. All right, that uh, concludes the lesson on uh, five types of tongues, in, of signs in the Bible. And uh, I do have another lesson, but I want to handle any questions there might be about the signs or other things that came up. Any questions? Thanks, Leo.